Okay, guys, so we're here in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. Um, we're actually stopping by the White House today, just standing in front. But here we are. We're going to be seeing a lot more monuments today. So we'll keep you updated with more vlogs. Back then, it's like we always had plans. Mama used to make me listen to them clean versions, and we rock with no girls. Back in the bus, um, there's really nice truck behind us, but the street is really pretty. Um, so yeah, we're still driving. I'm kind of lonely because my bus is just empty. Ooh, let's see. Okay, Hi. it's um, day three of 10 day. Um, currently in the bus, we're driving. Um, and wow, look at this. Look at this nice view. Okay, okay, let's see. On this really cute street. Wait, what? Look, it's so cute. Look, there's like a bakery, a restaurant, a really cute truck, some places. Ooh, so cute, so cute, so cute. Oh, wow. look, they're like birds. Um, I think we're going to the Capitol. This is a view right now. Very cool, very nice. Just lots of trucks. Oh, it's a green light. Let's go and find a place to park, but it's the Capitol. What? Capital of the United States, 100%. Definitely not Georgia. What? But look, y'all, what? That's so cool. That's so cool. It's gold. Mind blown. I hope you can hear me. Um, we're walking down the street right now. I don't know where we're going. Still in DC. Yay! Um, oh look. Actually, no. There's nothing there. There's a building right there. Whoa. Totally not my school. What? Um, oh my gosh, look. There's a scooter. Should we go ride it? Yeah, let's go ride the scooter. Okay. Yeah. Scooter's here. Let's see. No sidewalk riding. Ride safely. Okay, guys. I'm gonna try and get on. Let's see if this okay. I don't have the app. Coffee shop table at the front. I ain't gotta peep the menu. I know what I want already. And as we say, I think this is gonna be outside. Scooter didn't work. That's okay. We're just gonna walk. Ooh, look, there's a, a stone monument. Is this the Washington Monument? Neighborhood Abritum Trees Atlanta. Trees Atlanta. More like trees. DC. I want to be younger. Now that I'm wiser, I want to be dumber. What is up? And welcome back to my vlog of my Gastro 10 day journey. Today, we are going to Washington, D.C., so let's get going. Okay, and click play. It feels so amazing to be here in Washington, D.C. It almost feels like it's too good to be true, like I'm not really here. Look, it's Governor of Indiana, Leslie No. Ugh, don't you hate it when your journey has to stop at home? Okay, guys, we're at the, like, boring part of the trip where our counselors take us up to all these old, like, American history museums to learn stuff. It's just, like, I'm over it, but whatever. I get it. They have to, like, educate us or whatever. Yo, just got done with my first 10 day college tour. College is amazing, I'm so excited to go. Nope, Ricky Desktop taught me that I don't need college to be successful. See, look at this little college loser coming by right now. Hey, what's up, man? Psych! Woo! When I'm out of my day, some trouble. So yeah, I just finished my tour at Maryland and I don't know about you, but the vibes were pretty good. Skipper came along, it was pretty good. How did you like Maryland, Skipper? You know, the vibes, the vibes were chill. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying, but the only downside is that Joseph goes there, so I don't really know if we can actually consider it. Good people helping me out. Yeah, we're walking, we're walking back to the bus now. And Guys, the last few college visits have been really weird. So one of them, like the tour guide, smelled like absolute crap. Like this guy must have not been wearing deodorant or something. And then, and then another one, like we were walking by this this group of college kids, and they just started staring at us, like for no reason whatsoever. 
So that was weird. And then we get to this next one, and we're walking by this group of kids throwing a football or something. They were, I think they were Jewish. I don't know. And then one, and then one of them, they overthrew it and hit me in the back of the head. That hurt. So a lot of cool things, a lot of weird encounters. We'll see. But I'm liking college. I'm at Poconos, guys. These kids are so weird. Hey, shoot, here's one right now. We just got back from the Poconos, and let's just say I'm just so thankful that we live at Spa Ramah. That place is disgusting. Um, we had to sleep on like the floors of their cabin, and it was really, really hard. And like their beds weren't even like good and okay they did it they have to walk to their bathroom like i know we're spoiled because our bathroom's like right downstairs from us but like can you imagine in the middle of the night having to go to the bathroom and they have to walk there gross no thank you Bad. The rest of my clothes for the 10 day are soaking wet because we went to the pool yesterday and they don't have dryers in their cabins to dry our swimsuits or towels. Like I get out on their back porch that is awful and is literally breaking, but it didn't even dry because the trees covered it. Are you kidding me? They don't have dryers. after one really long Shabbat and the Bono and I agreed that we're really disappointed with our trip there because they didn't have any NJBs and we were expecting to find some. Hey guys, what's up? Okay, okay, I'm about to see Poconos. We're about to go with the boys. Machane Ramad Arum, a Jewish sleepaway camp in the mountains of Clayton, Georgia, become the set of two schwitzi to handle. Teenagers from all over the world 
come to Machane Ramad's room to meet their Jewish husbands, wives, groomsmen, and bridesmaids. I'm your host, Lana the Stender, and this is Too Schwitzy to Handle. Now let's go meet our contestants. <laughs> I'm from South Beach. I've been coming to Machane Rama since Solalim. Um, I decided to come on to Schwitzi to Handle because I'm really looking for my future husband and bridesmaids and I really think I can make those connections here, especially on like Shabbos walks and you know, just those special connections, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I mean, I obviously think I'm going to win because my name's Kylie and I'm like the best, you know, Hi for life. Woohoo. Life's a party. So I'm Benjamin. I'm from New York City and I've been going to camp since Garanim. I know, I'm cool like that. But I came on to Schwitzy to handle because... I really think I'm gonna find my wife here. She has to be Jewish, of course. Blonde, tall, blue eyes, skinny. You know the deal. But I can't wait for Mahane Ramon de Rome. I can't wait for what it has in store for me. And I know, I don't think it'll be a problem though because I usually pull all the girls. So, yeah. See everyone on the key car. The name's Caleb, but my friends call me Cal. I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, Royal Owls, and uh, I've decided to come on to Schwitzi to handle to uh, meet the right girl, you know, the one for Cal. I'm one of the OGs, been going to Ramah since Garanim, so I've had my fair share of Shabbos walks. I don't think there'll be too much competition. I'm definitely an alpha male, king of the Rome. People are often intimidated by me. Some have even compared me to the Wampus Cat. Rah! So y'all better watch out. See everyone on the key. My name is Leah and I am here from Booker Town, Florida, and I decided to come on to Schwitzy to handle to find my future husband, maybe bridesmaids. Um, I've been going to camp since Nitzanim and I can't wait to see what Machane Ramadarum has in store for me on to Schwitzy to handle. See everyone on the key. Hello, everyone. My name is Frankie, and I'm from Boca. I've been coming to Machane Ramad de Rome since Kochavim. Such a long time, I know. I decided to come on two shoots to the handle to find my next Shabbat walk. I usually go on a different Shabbat walk each week. I love them so much. Sometimes I even go on pair design walks. I know, crazy. All the Banim here are so obsessed with me. And as you can see, I'm pretty good at these things, you know? So I'll definitely be winning. Anyways, I can't wait to see what Machne Ramonda Rome has in store for me on Two Shitsy to Handle. See everyone on the key car. This is Nina, I'm from Tampa, Florida. I decided to come on Two Shitsy to Handle to find my future husband and bridesmaids. I am not here to start any drama. I've been going to camp since Solalim, and I can't wait to see what Machane Ramad de Rome has in store for me on Two Schwitzy to Handle. See everyone on the key. My name is Kanan. I'm from South Carolina, you know, with the waves and all that. And I've been going to camp for eight summers since Nitzanim. I have come on to Two Schwitzy to Handle to find my wifey. I can't wait to see what Machane Ramada Rome and Two Schwitzy to Handle have in store for me. See you at the key car! Hi, Marine. My name is Moshe. I live in California and I've been coming to Machane Ramada Rome since Nisanim to find friends with Jewish values just like mine. I decided to come on to Schwitzy to handle because I think it's time that I settle down and start a family with someone who is Jewish like me and will pray with me 
and celebrate Jewish holidays with me and just be overall a nice religious soulmate for me. I think I can make the, that connection. I go on Shabbat walks and I'll just know that they are the right Jewish person for me. Hey, I'm Hannah and I'm from the UK. I'm so excited for this amazing journey and once in a lifetime opportunity. Shabbat walks are like a part-time job to me. <laughs> I just got, you know, so addicted to it. But I still haven't found my charming NJB. I've been going to camp since Garanim and OM Hashem. Let's just say those boys are definitely my type. I can't wait to see what Macha Nerama Darom has in store for me on Two Schwitzi to Handle. See everyone on the Kiko. <laughs> Sisters, I'm David. I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, and I'm coming on to Schwitzy to Handle because I want to find my wifey, my NJG, my Jewish American princess, because <laughs> Gentiles just don't do it for me, man. I've been going to camp since Nitzanim. That's eight years I've been going here. I know my way around. I think I'll I think I'll do pretty well. Anyways, I cannot wait to see what this what this program what Too Schwitzy the Handle has in store for me. I'll see you all on the key. Rachel, I'm just so excited to be here. Like, I'm so excited. Like, I came, I've been coming to Rama for just like a few years, not that long to be honest. Um, but I am just really, I, I wanted to be on the show because I'm just so excited to get Schwitzy. Like, I love getting Schwitzy. And, um, I'm really just looking for, uh, like, a beautiful Jewish boy. Like, a little bit, you know, sexy a little bit. And, um, yeah, I just really thought that Ramon's Rome could provide that for me because I know they're so good with that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I'm just so excited to be on the show, and yeah, uh, if you ever need pictures, I'm here to take so many pictures, like, I love to take pictures of people that are just so, like, pretty and Jewish, and I'm so, I love it, so, yeah, catch me on the show, Lehi <laughs> Tra'o. Amigos, I'm Hashemi, it's nice to meet you. Let me tell you a little bit about why I decided to come on Two Schwitzy to Handle. It all began on a clear spring day in April of 2004. My mother pushed me from her womb, 5 foot 11 with a full head of hair. I got up, I said, thanks ma, I'll catch you on the flippy flop dog, and I strolled out, ready to begin my journey. Since then, I've been a metaphorical lost fish, swimming through the ocean, searching for myself, and searching for my special lady fish. And that's what brought me to Two Schwitzy to Handle. I'm here to find a special Jewish ladyfish and forge a special connection. That's about all for me, guys. I'll see you later. Hello, my name is Yaron, and I am from the safe place of Orlando, Florida. I have been going to camp since Solalim. And I decided to come on to Schwitzy to Handle because I really want to find my future husband. Now, I know this may be hard because I don't want to be caught during hill time. I don't want to um, break any rules because I just want to have fun. But whatever to Schwitzy to Handle has to come, I am willing to overcome it. But I'm also going to be here for all of my fellow contestants. Um... I can't wait to see what Machane Ramada Rome has in store for me today. And yeah, so let's go see if I find my new husband. Hello campers. Hope you're getting yourself situated here at Machane Ramada Rome. We hope you're excited to see what the summer has in store for each and every one of you. But there is one condition in spending your summer here on two Schwitzi to handle. This Mahsor, all Shabbat walks, and one-on-one -on -one socialization will be banned for the entirety of the month. Each time you are caught on a Shabbat walk, money will be deduced.
from your 100,000 shekel prize, and you'll be one step farther away from having a Gesher summer. Have fun and good luck. Over this summer, these Chanichim will have to endure something unimaginable. Camp without Shabbat walks and one-on-one -on -one socialization. Will they survive? Or will their high school hormones get the best of them? Stay tuned to find out how this season of Too Schwitzy to Handle will end. I'm your host, Alanda the Stender. It's time. Get ready. This is for you. You are the Ayala Master. You have trained for this moment since Nitsani walking up Lakeside Hill. You got this. Let's go! Trishat Shalom Bemahane Ramadaram Trishat Shalom Bemahadaram It's breakout! This year's theme is Get Back to Camp. First we have our dome. Our dome. Masks. Let's go a dome. Yarok, stay at home. Good afternoon and welcome to Shabbat Food ASMR.
here's my Friday afternoon snack. Cheers, Mum, for the money. Cheers. To show them the next thing that. Yes. So it's off. Okay. We originally ordered a hummus platter. However, we got a hummus bagel. Even better. <laughs> hummus bagel. Update. We don't like it. It's a no for the hummus bagel. No. Hi, shalom. Bruchim abayim. Today we are going to be making grape juice for Shabbat. I love Shabbat. It's my favorite holiday. So, you have a, uh, a cup here. And first you're going to take a grape. Okay? We taste one first to make sure it's good. Oh, very, very good. Okay? So, what you do, you take a...
great. Next, I'm gonna have the Murray's favorite thing. It is everything but the bagel. And in honor of everything but the bagel, I'm not gonna have a bagel in this. It's just gonna be this. Okay. So now I need to open it. And I opened it. Are we ready? Hello, this is my mukbang. So, we have a large, large stack of pancakes here that I just made, and a big thing of syrup, which we're not gonna be chugging or anything. And I'm gonna eat all this, so let's get into it. These are some delicious pancakes. Found right kind of lime. Just did it. Here we go. Too young. I think eat or seven. I don't know. Get some of that syrup on here. Maybe one more and then that's all I can do. This week on Keeping Up With The PKs. Romance. Drama. I saw Noam eating meat during the nine days. He's not even really a PK. His dad doesn't have a permanent pulpit. Jonah says all this stuff about me not eating right, but I know for a fact he turns his lights on on Shabbat. And later this season... Two years ago, Jeremy promised me he was going on that team with me, and now I hear he's following his dad's steps and going to list? I never wanted to go on a team, 
Besides, I'm going to make Alia after college anyways. Betrayal. Ava brought a guest to the PK Oneg last year and made it so awkward, especially when they didn't even eat the chicken chips. Like what? Plus, she shouldn't have been there in the first place. Her mom didn't even finish cantorial school, which means she's not even a real cantor. Like, who let her in? My mom has been at a congregation for 20 years. I think I know what it's like to be a PK. Hello everybody and welcome back. Before we begin manifesting our guest share experience, I want everyone to take a second to tap into their subconscious mind. This is a critical step of creating the outer experience that you seek. Has everyone tapped into their subconscious mind? Vibration. I'm marked you ready. Very. Very good. In order to successfully manifest, we must all be on the same wavelength. Everyone, lift your spiritual antennas and feel the vibes in the air. Very good. So now that the vibes have been felt, we are going to begin our first manifestation technique which is the 369 method. I learned about that on TikTok! Shh! You're interrupting the alignment of my chakras. You know Mercury's in retrograde, right? Please prepare a piece of paper and a writing instrument that matches the color of your aura. Okay, okay. I do not agree with this, okay? This is supporting the patriarchy, manifest destiny, where we systemically oppressed indigenous people. That's genocide, okay? This is not good. Manifesting is not good. I'm so against this. We need something better. Contribute our time. Worship a good cause. Something that's not the patriarchy. And you know what the answer to that is? Easy and simple. Rachel Dobbs Schwartz, okay? Sorry for that interruption. Everyone prepare a piece of paper and a writing utensil to write down what you would like to manifest. <laughs> Make sure to choose a writing utensil that aligns with your spiritual energy. I chose my pink papermate gel pen. It makes me feel very warm inside. Sing a little bit down today. My horoscope, I'm a Pisces. It's not fulfilled. Maybe you should try tarot cards. The cards never lie. Splendid. Up with this patriarchal bull. This is terrible. Let's get back to manifesting. The 369 method is one of the simplest, yes, most powerful methods of manifestation. When you wake up in the morning, your mind will be in the theta state. Everyone, please join me and write down Gesher XX three times. Everyone collectively thinks of Gesher, the outer experience that we all seek, will become a reality. We will regroup this afternoon where we will write Gesher six times, and then again in the evening, we will write it nine times. You know, okay, we, the thing we need to do, okay, is not write Gesher. We need to rewrite history, okay? Because right now, this is setting a precedent for our kids and our grandkids. And what we need to do is try to try to do that, okay? Because manifesting things just ain't it, okay? It just ain't it. Okay? You guys are all part of the so. So I think what Dustin was trying to say is that we need to regroup in order to manifest at the alpha state and at the delta state. It's like I always say: control your state, control your fate. That rhymes. <laughs> Everyone join me. 
In conclusion, with my argument, Kanye West for president. Um, um, Kanye West. Pressure. Um, the fasting is terrible. You guys are. Please be alive. Terrible. Terrible. Bye bye, um, um, um. Thank you all for joining us today on this spiritual journey. These are Zoom moments. These are Zoom moments. These are the Zoom moments. These are Zoom moments. These are zoo moments. These are the zoo moments. These are the zoo moments that inspire you to try new things. These are zoo moments that make you feel like a rock star. Good afternoon, Gesher. Was that anyone's favorite song? Anyone? Favorite song? Just type in the chat, raise your hand. No, that was no one's favorite song. These are the moments that set the stage for your future. moments that make you strong. All right, you guys, this is it. It's time. These are the moments that make us so strong. All right, let's do this. Okay. Time to squat. Yes, there is so strong. All right, let's do this. Drive the car, drive the car. Yeah. Yes, is so strong. Oh my goodness, I'm high knees. These are the moments that we wait for. Oh, cheer, Khan. Oh, cheer, Khan. Oh, cheer, Khan. Oh, cheer, Khan. These are the zoom moments that last a lifetime.
To me, camp is a place where I can truly be myself. I know that I've made so many friends at camp that will be with me for the rest of my life. Camp has had such a huge impact on me that I really don't know where I would be without camp. It has given me so many great experiences and it has truthfully turned into my second home. Camp to me means a home away from home where my family is and where I can feel safe and feel like I can be myself 100% of the time. So this is a little bit of a hard question just because camp means everything to me and I don't really know how well I can put that into words but it's my friends, it's my family, it's my happy place. It's, it's home, camp is where I always want to be, so to me, camp just, it means absolutely everything. Camp has allowed me to become a strong and proud member of the Jewish community, as well as a better leader, listener, and person. Camp has truly made me learn more about myself and about my Jewish identity. I've confidently can say that over the past few years I have grown my Jewish identity very, very strong and it's also made me learn more about others and how I can become a better person for others. Camp has given us these indescribable bonds that are going to be forever friendships and family members and I'm just forever grateful that I am the person I am today because of camp. Camp has changed me as a person by helping me find and develop my Jewish identity and introducing me to friends that have become my family. And I've learned so much from everyone that I've met there over the years. And it's just become the place where I feel most at home and most loved. And I couldn't be more grateful. Camp changed me as a person because it became easier and easier for me to make friends as I spent more and more years at camp. And now, like, people that I've only known for two months total, I've hung out with for two months total, I can say they're my best friends. Even though it was only a short time, it felt like so much longer. היית לי הבית, ואת מאושרת, לא זוכרת. למרות כל הרעה, אולי, אל תזכרת בלילות כשאת עוצרת את העיניים. גם לי, לפעמים גם לי עצוב שזה נגמר, הזמן לא עובר לי, הוא עוצר לי. היית לי הבית, ואת מאושרת, לא זוכרת. למרות כל הרעה,
גשתי את הכל, כמו ילד שמצייר בחול, בלי מכחול. גשתי את הכל מאז שבאת. גשתי את הכל, כמו ירח בלילה הגדול. מאירה לי את עצמי, תודה שבאת. גם אם תגיע השלכת, גם אם יפלו עלינו כל הכוכבים, אני אמצא בך את השקט, אהובתי שלי שלך לעולמים. גם אם תגיע השלכת, גם אם יפלו עלינו כל הכוכבים, אני אמצא בך את השקט, אהובתי שלי שלך לעולמים. יש בך את הכל. את מחזיקה בי כשאני עומד ליפול. אוי, יש לי את הכל, אני שלה. So this summer would have been my ninth summer at camp and I think the reason that I keep going back is honestly just the atmosphere. Like the environment and the people make it a place that is so worth it and a place that you never want to leave and I think that that's what makes it so special. I've decided to come back to camp for the next summer because even though the first summer was a little rocky for me, I loved my friend and I just thought that Ramada de Rome was a great experience for me. And I, I continue to come back to camp every single summer because it's my happy place and it's the place that I feel like I can be my best self. I also come back to camp every summer because my Jewish identity is at its best form there and my friends throughout the year keep me eager to come back every summer. Thank <laughs> you. רציתי לקטוף כמו איזה שני משוגעים בחוף 
Guest share is so much more special than the other years of camp because it's the year that we get to have closure and you know, kind of end camp at, uh, off on like a very high note and we get to be leaders and uh, we get to set an example for other guest shares and just the entire camp. This summer was supposed to be more special than summers in the past because at camp we're in a bubble from the rest of the world but in guest share you're in your own bubble within camp. Everything is a lot more meaningful in Gesher because it's going to, you know, at one point it's going to be your last. It's your last time to mention seeing the sloth with your friends and it's your last grilled cheese and tomato soup Mondays. So, you take everything a bit more seriously. So, this year was supposed to be different than the past because we were going to get to lead and play in Young Sport. I was really looking forward to running on stage during breakout um, and just helping plan the whole thing. Um, even though I'm sad we don't get to do it this year, I'm excited to do it when I'm a counselor, so that's fun. I've been looking forward to guest share since before I can remember when I was in Gone. And I've had such an amazing experience at Ramadaram, but part of what made that so great was knowing that the next year would be ten times better. And I knew all along it was leading up to guest share, which was supposed to be something I couldn't even imagine. at my synagogue more because Cobb Shop is something that's really special to me at camp um, and try to visit my friends and see them as much as possible and call them every night wish them a um, Shabbat Shalom and just try to stay connected to the community If I've learned anything is that camp is not just in the zip code of 30525 it is in your heart and it's about the connections that you make with people. I plan on keeping camp in my daily life by growing those relationships and making so many more memories with them. Camp has been a very important part of my life and an important part of my sister's lives. Uh, so one way that we are going to continue to keep uh, camp traditions alive at home um, are by doing Havdalah and by uh, making Shabbat very special and spending it together. I plan to continue keeping camp in my life by becoming a counselor and then contributing to the camp community as I grow up. I also plan to keep camp traditions with me, such as Cobb Shop and Hogdala. Yeah, I 
חשבנו, ניצחנו הכל מגדלים בשמיים בנינו בן אדם, מי צריך בן אדם? לא יבוא עוד מבול בימינו לעולם, לעולם לא ניפול תעזוב, נסתדר בעצמנו חכמים, נכונים וצודקים וכלום לא נמצא מעלינו עד שבאת והדבקת ושיגעת והזכרת ובלבלת והבהלת מיד איך החזרת את השפיות געגועים לבני אדם פתאום שורף את הבדידות כבר לא תשים מפה לשם כל הפארקים נעולים, חתונות כמעט בלי איש, כמעט איבדנו את עצמנו, כמעט הפסקנו להרגיש. עוד מעט זה הכל ייגמר, ואני מבקש אם אפשר, שבבוקר אחרי שתלכי לא נהיה שוב אותו הדבר. <עוד> 